This is a production of Cornell University. So my name is Julia Friso. I teach several classes at Cornell aiming to integrate many fields of science, including plant biochemistry, ethnobotany, traditional medicine, pharmacology, and drug discovery in the class curriculum, focusing on uh, evidence-based approach to medicinal plant species. Here I plotted in work clouds the student population enrolling in my courses at Cornell University and the course I teach online to demonstrate the large academic diversity of students in my classes. And also to demonstrate the strong interest from university students of all disciplines to learn about medicinal and pharmacological property of plant compounds. The majority of my students are pre-med, mainly from calls like plant biology major, environmental and sustainability major, from human ecology, uh, student interest in global health, but also students from the Dyson School of Business, biomedical and biological engineering. Uh, my students also include Cornell alumni, healthcare professional, nurse practitioner, and medical doctors. Um, in the last seven years, I developed and I'm currently teaching several classes covering the pharmaceutical property of plant compounds. There is an obvious, uh, uh, obviously a great appeal for this topic. My undergrads and master classes always reach full enrollment with long waiting lists. And the eCornell certificate that developed is the one of the most popular is certificate within CALS. Synchronous courses that I teach are Plan Bio 2100. This is also called Medical Ethnobotany. It's a course that explores the relationship between plants, people, and culture. According to the World Health Organization, 80% of the world population in developing countries depend on traditional and herbal medicine for the treatment of diseases. So in this sense, ethnobotany is really the science of survival. Um, particularly popular class, this one, because students can relate to their own personal experience uh, with plant-based medicine and verify many popular claims through the scientific literature. Students get familiar with the past and current plant-based natural remedies used across the globe, exploring their efficacy and mode of action. When we study natural compounds, we observe that their medicinal values is often due to a synergistic action of multiple components and does not really always fit our modern concept of drug discovery, which rely on the isolation and study of single compound drugs. The course uh, emphasized the importance of uh, preservation of indigenous knowledge, native culture and languages, and distinguish between bioprospecting and biopiracy and discuss intellectual property with many examples. Plan Bios 3100 is a higher level course uh, exploring the biochemical and pharmacological property of isolated bioactive compounds found in plants as source of medicine sold by pharmaceutical companies. The course covers the distribution of plant secondary metabolites, the use of technique in the isolation and structure elucidation of natural product, the physical chemical characteristic, pharmacokinetic property, and the steps involving drug production and drug approval in the Western medicine. Uh, it explores synthetic and semi-synthetic analogs studied for different reasons, including finding new patentable isolated compound pharmaceutical, scale-up production, guarantee a sustainable source, tweak natural product structure to decrease toxicity, and or to increase bioavailability. 
Plant science 5045, uh, cannabis chemistry and pharmacology, including bioavailability and mode of action, toxicology and safety of cannabis bioactive compound. It's another very popular class among um, master students and undergraduates. Um, this course covers the function of the endocannabinoid system in the human body, the biosynthesis and distribution of plant terpenoids and cannabinoids, the technique used in the isolation and structural elucidation, the value of biological assay, and the step involved in drug production and approval. Um, I also uh, teach um, some classes to Cornell alumni that have been very, very popular with close to 100 participants and really long waiting list. Um, the classes discuss plant-based natural remedies used across millennia and across the globe, considering their efficacy, mode of action, and effect on our body, while expanding our understanding of the natural world, traditional medicine, and human diversity. Um, I also created various courses taught asynchronously, including an e cornell certificate formed by six courses on medicinal plants, opens to students worldwide. e cornell certificate, uh, the certificate examines the historical application of plant-based medicine, the compounds that are commonly found, the potential safety consideration, and how to critically evaluate labels and packaging of plant-based medicine. I am currently developing a new e certificate on medical cannabis. This is a five core certificate, which contextualizes the role of cannabis through history, medicine, and the legal system. Analyze the most popular extraction method and how this affect the chemical profiling of the plant and the medical cannabis product. It analyzes the different synergies between chemical compounds composition in the cannabis plants and understand the pharmacology of cannabis bioactive compounds, how medicinal cannabis product get to the market um, via the FDA approval. It also explores how medical and recreational cannabis differ and what type of product are currently available in medical dispensaries. Um, I also have been a visiting professor at the Department of Pharmaceutical Science at the University of Padova in Italy, winner of a Shaping a World Class University grant, and I taught plant um, as green factory for pharmaceutical. Uh, from medicinal botany to large scale production. Um, uh, to, this was a class uh, for pharmacology master student, which also reached full enrollment and was very well received. So, um, my main goal as a teacher is really to share with my students the world of of wonders and complexity of plant chemistry, exploring their potential for solution to health, dietary, and sustainable issue in a multidisciplinary approach, transferring this enthusiasm for the natural world. Um, I uh, discuss uh, um, many uh, different traditional medicine systems. Here you can see that many of the medical tradition that we consider to be part of the past actually really persists today worldwide as part of traditional medicine and indigenous culture, such as Ayurveda, Kampo, Jammu, shamanism and curanderism practice in Central South America, Native American traditional medicine in North America and Canada and so on. And the point here is that natural medicine can be found in every region of the world today. Um, topics, uh, these are some of the topics and structure of my courses with uh, which um, always emphasize uh, case study with many examples. Um, over the past year, I implemented teaching programs of active learning to increase student retention and satisfaction and engage my student in broad 
outreach uh, activities with community outside the university, including the Cayuga Nation and uh, uh, currently with Harlem Grove. Um, in conclusion, these are some of the topics discussed in my courses. And uh, finally, um, I would like to conclude with a few questions uh, for a reflection. In 2010, Dr. Margaret Chan, Director General of the World Health Organization, advocates the two systems of traditional medicine and Western medicine need not to clash, quote. They can blend together in a beneficial harmony using the best feature of each system and compensating for, for certain weaknesses of each. Now, in some part of the world, such as Japan and China, most medical doctors are trained in both herbal traditional medicine and Western medicine and apply them daily to their patients, depending on the severity and condition of the patient illnesses. Now, I would like you to reflect on this question. What is the role of natural products in modern medicine, in the modern medicine system? Is the endocannabinoid system and medical cannabis studied and covered in the medical curriculum? Why and why not? How can we integrate traditional medicine and Western medicine for the benefit of all? How can we educate students and patients to the risk and benefits of plant-based medicine? Finally, I would like to conclude with my favorite quote, the rainforest hold answer to question we have yet to ask. And this is because humans have been turning to nature for solution to health and healing for millennia. But as we know, environments are in peril, ecosystems are under threat. And when we lose a plant species, with that we lose millions of years of evolution and a natural chemical factory. So sustainable future involves not just respect and preservation of the diversity of the natural world and native people and native culture, but also education play a crucial role in it. And that's why we're here. <laughs> so thank you all, and I hope to meet you all soon. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.